，融聚智慧，方能融创价值。融你我，融无限。江苏银行。Hello, my name is Heinrich Hiesinger, and I am the CEO of a company, Thyssen Group. And the program you are now watching is Whose Time. 提到德国的蒂森克鲁伯集团呢，很多人对它的印象还是停留在低调的欧洲老牌钢铁业巨头上。而实际上呢，这家有着两百多年历史的钢铁大王正在转型为多元化的工业集团。业务呢，包括了机械零部件技术、电梯技术、材料服务、工业解决方案以及钢铁等等，为全球将近八十个国家和地区提供着服务。蒂森克鲁伯集团的现任董事会主席海里希·赫辛根今年五十七岁，有着德国慕尼黑技术大学电子工程博士背景。他曾经在西门子公司工作过十八年，担任过董事会董事、工业业务领域的首席执行官等等职务。在二零一零年的十月份呢，他加入了蒂森克鲁伯集团，被任命为集团的董事会副主席。二零一一年的一月下旬，出任集团董事会主席以及首席执行官。主导了蒂森克鲁伯的业务转型和创新进程，在几年的时间里呢，成功带领集团扭亏为盈。不久前呢，何辛根到访北京，并接受了财新时间的专访，分享了他对于人们普遍关心的钢铁行业的去产能、调节构以及钢铁企业转型与创新等等话题的看法。The steel industry is going through the challenge of the overcapacity. So, what's your、um, prediction of the future trade of the steel industry? You think? The overcapacity is definitely a big issue. There are really studies for the mid and long term outlook in that industry,、mm -hmm. and it became obvious that the growth going forward will be very moderate.、Okay. So、uh, any assumption that we can outgrow the problem of overcapacity、okay. is definitely not true. So we need to continue to restructure our industry. I think in、uh, order to make the industry、uh, again attractive and provide an environment where companies can. Earn money,、mm -hmm. uh, enough money to let's say invest in innovation. I think we need to、uh, solve the structural problem,、mm -hmm. and that means that in each and every regions,、uh, the companies need to take out、uh, capacity,、mm -hmm. so that、uh, supply and demand、uh, fits much better. And this will really drive up earnings, and out of that, we can then go and invest more in innovation,、mm -hmm. so bringing,、uh, let's say. More differentiating material to our customers. So you think the structure problem is the major challenge for most of steel enterprises currently? Absolutely. I think any industry which is、uh, has a misfit、mm -hmm. between、uh, the demand and oversupply、mm -hmm. uh, has the consequences that the, the earning potential、uh, for the companies and therefore their capability、mm -hmm. to invest in a more promising future、mm -hmm. is limited to a certain extent. How the companies accomplish this challenge, what, and what's your plan?、Uh, we did in Europe two things. First of all,、uh, by in a step-by-step -step approach, as we did already in, the,、uh, in Germany and in Europe,、mm -hmm. we have to close capacity,、mm -hmm. yeah, uh, which is just obsolete in order to provide, as I said, a more balanced、uh, demand and supply thing. Secondly,、mm -hmm. companies need to invest in innovation. Because there is still a big difference whether you provide simple commodity material,、mm -hmm. or whether you have more innovative、uh, high-strength steel or even composite material.、Mm -hmm. The third one, which、uh, our company is doing right now, that you completely transform your company,、mm -hmm. that you actually reduce the overall share of steel making, and invest in total different businesses.、Mm -hmm. So there are multi levers.、Uh, let's say how you can transform a company in a more promising future. You're speaking of、uh, innovation within the company. As we know,、um, uh, it's a very, it's a very famous tradition, a European steel giant. But right now, it's very actively promote its own transformation. Why you make this、um, strategic decision? As I said at the very beginning, when we looked on、uh, the outlook for the steel industry, we recognized that the growth opportunities in that industry are rather limited. Secondly, due to the overcapacity, also the earning potential 
is limited to a certain extent. That means for us, investing more in that industry did not make a lot of sense. Okay. So therefore, we decided that we will reduce the share of steel making in our company mm -hmm. and start to grow more attractive areas, uh, let's say, uh, more aggressively, for example, automotive parts, mm -hmm. elevator and escalators, or our plant and engineering business. Mm -hmm. So it was really providing a more promising future for our company. Uh, what's the current ratio of the traditional steel revenue with the other business sector? Yes, uh, meanwhile, actually, our transformation uh, went uh, to a far stage because steel production today represents only 25% of our company. And 75% is already capital goods and services. Mm -hmm. Are you satisfied? Not totally. We have already announced uh -huh. that we would see the further need that we even consolidate further the steel industry in Europe and we as Tucson Group, we want to play an active role in it. 中国钢铁行业改革的进程呢，正在逐步的加速。那么到去年的十一月份呢，中国工业与信息化部正式发布了《钢铁工业调整升级规划》，将去产能列为重点任务之首，强调企业坚定重组转型升级，并且提出呢
start to build up future-oriented industries, but it's also necessary from an environmental standpoint. 伊森克鲁伯与中国的业务往来呢，可以追溯到十九世纪。目前呢，在中国拥有三十余家生产企业、合资公司和代表机构，投资总额超过了一百五十亿人民币。中国呢，已经成为了除德国本土之外，伊森克鲁伯最为重要的战略市场之一。近年来呢，随着中国成为全球最大的汽车市场，迪森克鲁伯在汽车零部件技术方面也加大了投入，力求能够抓住市场机遇。那么在去年底的时候呢，集团在常州投资建立了世界最大的汽车转向系统生产基地之一，项目一期的投资呢就达到了两亿欧元，这一大手笔也在行业内引发了广泛的关注。So speaking of the Chinese market, last year the company uh invested and built two factories in China. It's Changzhou and Pinghu, right? In, in order to expand the layout of automobile part business, does this mean、uh, the company is very optimistic about auto and automobile business in China market? Yes, we are, and、uh, it's not only the, this year. Also, in la- recent years,、okay. we actually have built up nine、uh, factories for automotive nine components factories. in、uh, China.、Mm-hmm. And you made reference to our new plant in Changzhou. This、mm-hmm. probably is one of the world's last、uh, largest plant for、okay. steering technology.、Mm-hmm. Uh, and、uh, you know, with 28 million passenger cars,、mm-hmm. China is mean by the largest automotive market、uh, on globe.、Mm-hmm. So、uh, that means we are also going forward quite optimistic. And as we said, we know that we can only compete in the market, whether it's China or US.、Mm-hmm. If we have localized the business,、mm-hmm. and that's the reason why we invest in plants here. Okay, what's the future plan in China? <laughs> we continue to invest.、Uh, we, uh, as、uh, said, we always are eager to really harvest growth opportunities. So, in the last five years, we have invested more than 500 million. That means more than 100 million a year.、Mm-hmm. And as long as there is growth momentum in the market, we will continue that investment、uh, path. Speaking of the United States market, since the President Donald Trump has taken office, he is very, how to say, aggressively maybe to promote manufacturing and trying to attract those companies、um, going back to the United States.、Mm-hmm. Does those strategy and policy affect on the companies flying United States market? First of all,、uh, the North American market、uh, is already quite significant for us because we have a sales of nine billion euro. And employ twenty one thousand employees already there.、Mm-hmm. Uh, luckily, eighty percent of the value add is already localized.、Mm-hmm. So we see a positive impact if he re- is really investing into infrastructure because this will immediately benefit our elevator and escalator business. It will also,、uh, let's say, support、uh, all equipment which we deliver into the construction industry. So to eighty percent, probably it's、uh, positive. We see some risk、uh, to the remaining 20%, which we import from outside into U.S. If,、uh, let's say, the president would come along with、uh, some、uh, import duty or border adjustment tax, but luckily, I think we are much more advanced than other companies, as 80% is already localized. Well,、um, the company has recently sold its steel mill in Brazil. What caused this huge loss in this market? We have built a steel plant. In Brazil and in、uh, USA,、mm-hmm. but what has changed me? Well, first of all, that raw material prices have increased significantly.、Mm-hmm. Secondly, the assumption that Brazil remains a low-cost country, both in labor cost and energy, is not true anymore.、Yeah? Mm-hmm. The let's say wages have increased significantly, and the energy pricing are to a much much higher level. And thirdly, the exchange rate volatility between Brazil and US. Is extremely volatile, and all those factors actually、uh, has changed the situation that the original、uh, strategic plans cannot materialize anymore.、Mm-hmm. And in order to minimize the impact, we decided to sell both plants. We succeeded already in USA in 2013,、mm-hmm. and we finalized the sale of the Brazilian plant at the beginning of this year. 作为钢铁企业转型升级的范本，迪森克鲁伯的转型进程可以追溯到两千零八年金融危机之前。考虑到未来技术进步的大趋势，钢铁市场发展的潜力受限，迪森克鲁伯开始进行战略调整，缩减钢铁业务，并拓展材料和机械零部件等领域，同时呢削减成本，大大的提高创新研发的投入力度。仅仅在过去的五年当中呢，迪森克鲁伯在创新研发方面的投入就高达了三十五亿欧元，创新成果十分的显著。What's the、um, structure of the innovation department within the company? It's the 
independent department within the company, and all, or the company will cooperate with other institutions or the technology, maybe accelerates. Actually, we have uh, different levels. Okay. Let's say the main, uh, let's say, product lines are really uh, developed in the businesses. Mm -hmm. Then we, we have a corporate department directly reporting to me where we make sure that, that we share technologies across mm -hmm. businesses. For example, we were uh, the inventor of the multi, the first elevator without ropes. Okay. Uh, actually, the MIT, uh, let's say, awarded us as one of the 50 smartest companies of the world. Mm -hmm. And the very simple reason is that our elevator guys mm -hmm. had access to experts from the automotive industry who know that technology. Mm -hmm. And we made sure. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, as you said correctly, we are working together with universities okay. yeah, in order to make sure that we do not miss, uh, let's say, a new technology already available. So it's a, a mix of all of them. Okay. Let's talk about uh, Industry 4.0. And what's the company's understanding and the practice of Industry 4.0? We do apply it in all our businesses, even, by the way, in, in steel. Uh, mm -hmm. First of all, we increase, uh, let's say, efficiency and flexibility uh, in all our business. For example, mm -hmm. and I make uh, explicitly reference to a steel business, our customers in one of our steel plants in Europe they are directly linked and can look, uh, let's say, into our SAP system. Mm -hmm. And they actually can change the sequence of their orders mm -hmm. uh, the day before actually we produce it. Mm -hmm. That means they can really adjust the sequence of the order according to their inter-customer demand. Mm -hmm. And this reduces their inventory level significantly. Mm -hmm. So th you can only do this because we are connected via a digital platform. Okay. But also we use, uh, let's say, uh, big data analytics to provide complete new services. For example, in our elevator business, mm -hmm. we equip our elevators with sensors, mm -hmm. we connect the sensors to the cloud, mm -hmm. we analyze the data, and out of that data, we can really predict when a service is necessary mm -hmm. before the elevator comes to a standstill. Mm -hmm. yeah? And then the third point where we are trying is that we really try to build complete new business models. Yeah, in some of our business. So there are actually three fields. Mm -hmm. One area is where we optimize the existing supply chain in quality, efficiency, and flexibility. The second part is where we use big data analytics to provide better service for our customers. Mm -hmm. And the third part is where we try to develop complete new business models. But this is true for all our businesses. Since you have worked at Siemens, one of the participants of German Industry 4.0 strategy, what do you think the similarity, all the differences between the Siemens and the uh, Disney Group in terms of participant industry 4.0? I think the roles are slightly different because uh, Siemens actually is a provider of sensors of automation technology and platforms. Mm -hmm. What we are doing is that we use those technology in our value chain to provide better services for our customers. What kind of the impact will those the incidents such as the internet attack have on the enterprises which are in the process of digital transformations? I think uh, mm -hmm. each and every company need to understand that we need to invest much more in cybersecurity. And secondly, that we need to have a quite intelligent structure mm -hmm. how we secure our data because on a front end, mm -hmm where we want to connect, get to connected to our customers and suppliers, mm -hmm. I think we need to have a very easy access so the security level will be low. Mm -hmm. But for very sensitive data, I think you need to shell, uh, let's say, secure it, let's say, much more tight. And this is really a, a decision you need to make. Where do you store your data? Rather in the front end to make access easy and more comfortable, or rather in a very secure place where you have a lot of hurdles to, uh, let's say, get access to those data. And this well-structured, let's say, uh, allocation of data probably is one of the biggest challenges for large enterprises going forward.